what's up everybody? So, I've been actually trying to make this video for like a week, so here we go. Uh, my, uh, yeah, what is my saying? I've been saying this for a really, really long time. What is it? I'll tell you. Help and be helped, love and be loved, learn and be learned. So you know what? Don himself actually has done me a very, very big favor. Really, really cool. Something to show you. But before I show you that, if I can get these to stay, there we go. Um, I went ahead and wrapped some wire on this multi-layered uh, bobbin just to play around with it. I did wrap, uh, I don't know if you can even see it. I wrapped some wire down inside there in a different pattern. And I also wrapped wire around here in a different pattern. You can kind of see it crisscrossing. Um, yeah, so I did that. Now, Don, uh, Dino Don, 64, and most of you know him. He's the one who released uh, the estate photos to a few for um, all to see. I released them on my website if you haven't seen them, uh, as well as a few other people. Now, what's really, really cool is that I don't have any wire, proper wire, or any cores for this. So Don himself has made cores, okay? He made these, I think, two years ago. And from what I understand, he made three sets. And Tony Woodside has one. And here's the other one. So here's the whole stack of cores. Uh, this is, uh, quit, there you go, laminate, regular laminated cores like you'd find in a regular transformer. All right, uh, the ends are right here. I'm going to drop them. Okay. All of them are there. He hand cut all these. Um, now the only thing that I've run into thus far is that my outer bobbin is just not quite, not quite well. These fit just right. Like this length. They fit uh, exactly the way they should. But this way, as you can see, I'm hitting and uh, I'm gonna have to make an outer bobbin just ever so slightly smaller than what I have so I'm gonna be doing that <clears throat> alright now the other thing that Don sent me is this right here and this is the stainless steel wire that was at Stan's estate alright I've calipered it I've measured it um, I've done some interesting tests I've uh, played with it a little, cut off a little piece. Um, Don doesn't know if there's enough even here to do the whole thing, the whole VIC, but I think there is quite a bit on here. Um, <clears throat> this is really small wire, but it's, I measured it to be around 16.5 um, ohms per foot, and um, <clears throat> the other guy was saying it's about 15 ohms per foot. So this is um, 430 stainless steel enamel wire. Let's see if you can Let's see if we can get a, a close up how small it is. It's tiny stuff. Alright. So there you go. See how small it is. Um, I will post all measurements, documentation on this wire um, that I can do on it. Um, it is magnetic. It's really, really some weird stuff. It's really tough, really strong. Um, <clears throat> yeah. Don, what a freaking blessing, buddy. You have no idea. Um, this gives me the best opportunity to make this VIC coil work. You've given me the cores and the wire. Um, I will have to be purchasing some other wire. Um, I did post a really uh, a lot of information drawn from the uh, patents. I, I grabbed all the information I could find and posted it on a particular thread um, over at the uh, forums. I will also be posting any documentation I do on any of this other stuff there. The next thing I have to say, um, before I move on, I just want to say thank you, Don, and thank you, everyone else, for your uh, support. Um, it's needed, and uh, I appreciate it. So, moving on. Next thing I got to tell you is uh, still about the VIC. We did get the um, the cores ordered. Um, it'll be mm, about four to five weeks, hopefully less, to, to get the cores for this particular VIC. Um, <clears throat> and... The next thing I want to tell you is very important. Um, I want to give my, my, my biggest shout out to Tony Woodside. Um, 
He, uh, he's been in contact with me uh, a lot more lately and everybody over at the forums. And um, I hope it stays that way. Tony's a really great guy. And, um, you know, he's, he's full-blown open source. He has released the uh, VIC schematic that he has built and he's selling on his website. He has open sourced that particular schematic. You can build it yourself. It's all there. Go to globalcast.com. That's uh, globalcast.com. And, uh, you know, give him a shout out, man. It's it's uh, freaking awesome. He also, uh, over at the RWG Research Forums, um, I will post the link in the description to that thread as well. It's the um, VIC thread. Basically, he has released uh, anything else he's been dealing with with the 8XA and the and any of the other circuits. So for those of you who have not and not seen those circuits or you don't know what they look like or you know what I'm talking about, go check it out. Um, the next thing I want to show you, and I'm going to unplug this camera so I hope it doesn't quit on me. Ah, perfect. The next thing I want to show you, uh, well, before I do that, Tony, buddy, thank you. Um, God bless you, sir. And, um, you know, open source is the way to be. And it's the only way we are going to get this stuff done. And I, I know you feel that way. And uh, as you stated in the past and over uh, talking to you a little bit, uh, you know, we regret some of the things we do and wish we would have open sourced things earlier and this and that. But you know what? Tony, I'm with you, brother. It's life, ain't it? It's what happens. Now, Jeff over at the forums uh, and Nate and Hexar have been building these 3D printers. Okay, and that's exactly what these particular um, bobbins were printed off of, a 3D printer. All right. Well, they've been working out a lot of bugs, doing a lot of piddly stuff, uh, trying to get all the things worked out. And guess what Jeff sent me in the mail? Yeah, you guys are going to like this. I got another project. Thanks, Jeff. Now I got to find all the parts for this thing. Check this out. Jeff printed me all an entire set of pieces for the 3D printers that they have built. I think it's a Prusa model. So I've got all the pieces I need uh, to build this thing as far as the plastic components are concerned. I mean, check this gear out. This stuff was printed on a 3D printer. The same thing you'd find just, you know, like putting paper in a printer, except this one prints out in 3D. So these two, these two gears, ah, uh, if I can hold them. These two gears mesh together, just like this. Got it backwards. There we go. Just like that. Check that out. Is that not cool? It's got the the flat spot, and the uh, put a set screw in there. I believe that's how it works. I haven't really looked at their their work too too much on this. I haven't been following them. Now, one thing that I think is freaking awesome, and I think you guys will really like this. All right, this particular piece. It's fun it's a little easier to pull out. This one will work. Alright. This zip tie holds a slide bearing. Okay. What's interesting is that that hole right there, alright, there's nothing else on this whole piece that has a place where there's a hole. Okay. That hole is actually curved and you can put this zip tie in here just like that and that zip that that's a curved printed hole inside there that is just too cool I just haven't I haven't paid too much attention to their uh, printer thread and they've been doing some cool stuff on this um, they worked out a lot of bugs I know Jeff has casted and milled his own hot plate so he can print these on a hot surface so that the plastic cools all at the same temperature Otherwise, it kind of wants to curl. And uh, after seeing some of Nate's prints and Jeff's prints, I must say, Nate, you got to get your hotbed working if you haven't, because these things are just flat, flat, flat. I mean, you can't get, you can't get any flatter. And uh, it's all due to that uh, that bed, heated bed, pretty nice. So there you go. Now Jeff's gonna have to uh, cast and mill me a, a hot plate. And I'm going to have to find all the parts. I actually have some stepper motors and stuff I could use, but I might have to get something different. The ones I got are a little bit bigger. You can see here's a, a motor mount. And that's where the pulley and the timing gears are. These these gears are actually for those little timing belts. You can see how they're shaped. <laughs> that's too cool. So i got to give a big shout out to Jeff, too, for sending me that. He also sent me a little uh, mechanical counter. And... Uh, 
Dude, just sharing the love, guys. Um, sharing the love. That's what I'm talking about. Peace and love to you all. One last thing I want to say, if you haven't seen Tin Man's last video, please go check it out. Pretty cool stuff. He's taking heat, converting it into electricity. So normal exhaust waste, turning it into electricity. Um, that is freaking cool. So there's the first item that actually came from Stan's estate that I'm holding in my hands. So I want to give Don a big shout out again for, for allowing me to do that. Pretty cool stuff. Um, other than that... This Russ, rwgresearch.com. I will be doing a live show this weekend. Um, I got a, a pipe to finish off the exit on the exhaust gases. Uh, some of you were thinking maybe the exhaust gases were being sucked back into the intake and not from the uh, exit part of the engine. Well, I decided to uh, quickly hold a cup metal can over that exhaust and you can almost close the exhaust off and that engine will just continue to run just fine. So I'm uh, going to make my adapter and put my last ball valve on there and show you guys that. Uh, it will run on its own exhaust gases for um, not completely shut off. It will run for two or three seconds completely shut off, obviously. But even, even with it just barely cracked open, it's continuously circulating. And yes, that uh, little squiggly pipe does actually cool uh, the, uh, the exhaust gases. This right here. This, this does really well for cooling the exhaust gases. Um, I'm going to have to make a little bit better setup here on my intake here, not to fix something up there. But I'm going to put a ball valve here, and um, yeah, that is some cool stuff. So, big shout out to everyone, um, anyone who's done anything lately, and I have not gotten back on people with my emails, and people have been trying to contact me. I've just been trying to uh, keep my mind focused on a few other things in life, and uh, keep life continuing on the right path forward get this stuff done so there you go <sighs> thanks guys god bless you all take care please uh, leave a comment as normal still haven't got back to any of my youtube comments <sighs> disappointing i know my apologies to you all but uh, i will and uh, thank you guys for the comments it's good to see comments that means people are listening to the videos and seeing what i have to say i find that important all right so what's the motto ready love and be loved Learn and be learned, and uh, help and be helped. Okay? That's what's supposed to happen. So, that's what's happening. Alright, peace out. Uh, live show this uh, Sunday night. It's really Monday morning. I do it at midnight Sunday night, so it's zero hundred hours on Monday. Okay? I'll see you there. Have a good day. Bye. You thought it was over, didn't you? Actually, it was, but I forgot. I forgot to add my good bud, Blaine. My good buddy Blaine into the system here, sharing the love and totally forgot. So, what I wanted to show you is what Blaine sent me. And what I like about Blaine is that I asked him very kindly if he had another one of these power supplies. 10,000 volt positive supplies. And guess what he did? There is the, the other one he sent me a long time ago, and here's the, the next one. Um, I'm actually theoretically borrowing these, and I believe I actually um, said about some stuff about Blaine before but I wanted to show you how he packs stuff this is hilarious so this was in the middle of the box and then what he likes to do is pack the rest of the box with stuff and sometimes this stuff's awesome um, look at these resistors and, and, and there's a few capacitors in here and stuff he just piled this stuff around there random pieces and parts and coils and a whole stack. I already got a stack of these a while back. A bunch of different uh, Zener diodes. A bunch of stuff. Uh, some heat sinks. Uh, big old giant capacitors. Small capacitors. This thing's pretty cool. This is a uh, like a torch for propane or just like a, a flame. Awesome. Awesome. Uh, but my favorite thing in this box besides the high voltage supply is this ignition coil. Two prong ignition coil. That's going to help me out because in other ones I'm having some issues running them correctly but that should work out. Perfect. And the last thing that I should never give to my kids is this shocking cell phone. My wife did not like it. She did not like it at all. It was very bad. Anyway, uh, that's it. just want to give a shout out to Blaine because I forgot to do that. How shame, shame of me. I know, I know. Alright, I'm out. Have a good day guys. Peace.